Hello. In this short lecture, we are going to discuss the post analysis of the fencing detail, F2, as discussed previously. Now for the post analysis, we're gonna look at two separate items. First, we're gonna look at axial forces, and then next, we'll look at flexure. We're only gonna check these two, as opposed to also checking shear. Um, we'll only check these two as properties of the section, um, because using our engineering judgment, we're gonna, um, we're gonna predict that axial and more likely flexure is what's going to govern the design. So as you may remember, we have our PV vertical force that comes from our dead load. We have our pH horizontal force that's gonna come from our live load and our um, create a moment uh, internally in this section, as well as the height, um, which is going to be 110 centimeters of unbraced length um, above, the, above the approach ramp. <clears throat> like I said, our demand forces um, with that A uh, subsection, or sorry, subscript, um, are going to be our maximum axial force is just going to be that vertical force. And our maximum moment, we're gonna assume, is applied at the full uh, length of H uh, because this is a cantilever beam. And as we uh, determined in the previous lecture, the dead load is going to be approximately 40 pounds. You see that note that I added? I had forgotten to add the uh, grout fill uh, for this specific uh, F2 detail. And the live load is going to be approximately 328 pounds when we use the uh, distributed, um, distributed calculation. Now that we have our demand, we're going to want to calculate our capacity of the section. And we will use the AISC specifications 14th edition that is linked um, in the textbook section of this course for uh, finding the, we'll go through that design process for finding the capacity of the section, <clears throat> as well as how to check, check the section. So what we're gonna need to find first from the AISC is information specific to an HSS um, channel and specifically the channel size we are using. Uh, we're going to need to find our gross sectional area, thickness, our weight, our width to thickness ratio, and we'll take the elastic modulus and yield strength of a typical channel per the A360 specifications. Now we need to find which equations to use. In order to first do this, we need to check slenderness and compactness of the section. So table B4.1A and B4.1B for axial and flexure uh, failure modes. And we're gonna use case nine uh, when discussing axial and case 20 when discussing flexure because these are both the cases for the round HSS section. I'm gonna check that the uh, width to thickness ratio is less than these two conditions. Um, or we'll find that the width to thickness ratio is less than these two conditions, which makes it a non-slender compact uh, section. You might be wondering as well if we should be checking this as a composite member because there is a grout fill inside of that HSS, but that's actually going to reduce its capacity in the check we do. And the grout itself does not add any flexural capacity. Um, remember, if we're thinking about it like concrete, if we're not adding any steel rebar, inside of that grout, it's not gonna have any, uh, any more capacity in tension, um, sorry, in flexure. So we're not even going to consider that grout as um, you know, helping within the flexure calculation. So we won't uh, consider it other than for its dead load. So first we'll navigate to chapter E and we'll look at compression or the axial, axial load check. We find that our factor of safety for ASD analysis is 1.67. In table E1.1 um, for a non-slender round HSS member shows we only need to do the E3 check. And we navigate to the E3 check, you can find there is three new pieces of information we need to find from the AISC info. The effective length factor, which you can find in table C-A-7.1 for condition E, which is a cantilever beam. 
um, a cantilever uh, pose condition. L will just be our unbraced length and R will be our radius of gyration, which is also in the shapes database. So next we check KL over R is less than 4.71 the square root of E over FY. And what that tells us is we can use equation three, E3-2 um, in order to check our uh, compression or find our critical force, which is noted by the equation here for FCR. The last piece of the puzzle is what our FE is, which if we navigate to equation E3-4, just below that, uh, that's our elastic buckling stress. And once again, can be found from the information we, we looked up in the shapes database here. So it's a lot of moving around between different equations and um, kind of like a flow chart, this equation tells you to go to this direction. If their answer to these, this is yes, or this is no, we move to this direction. But as you get comfortable um, looking through the code, you'll find that it's really, really not too bad to, um, if you have, uh, you know, well-documented conditions to, to uh, find the values you need. So finally, we can go back up to equation E3-1 that governs for the section and we can find that our nominal capacity is our critical force times our uh, gross area of the section. And we have the values for both of these numbers. So we can go ahead and check that our nominal divided by our factor of safety is greater than equal to our um, demand force. All right, oops. Now moving on to chapter F, which is flexure, we'll go through a similar process with the same factor of safety. In table F1.1, it tells us we need to check yielding and lo uh, local buckling for F8 condition, which is around HSS member. Before we navigate into F8, um, we will look at the you know, first equation, F1-1, before we navigate into the specific sections. And that tells us we take CB equals one for a cantilever um, condition. Now we'll skip to F8, which first has us check again that our um, with the thickness ratio is less than 0.45 E over FY. And given our, our conditions, that, that should be the case. Final note here is that because it's a compact member, you can see that flange local buckling or local buckling, buckling does not apply. So we only have one check to make, which is our yielding, which as you can imagine is just um, truly checking the strength of the steel of the, for yielding. Um, and our equation here is that our nominal moment uh, capacity is gonna be equal to our plastic uh, stress distribution, which is Fy times Z. As you may remember from previous lectures, um, Z is just a section property we can find in our AIC shapes database. And because we're using a symmetrical member, it doesn't matter whether it's the Y, ZY, or ZX. Um, and Fy is our yielding capacity of the steel, uh, which we've taken as 36 KSI. And ultimately, we can check our nominal moment capacity divided by the factor of safety is greater than or equal to demand. And that will conclude how we do an analysis of the post. In the next section, I'll discuss um, the embedment of the post into, um, into the concrete blockout as it's specified in the detail and how we check that to now that we know um, our post is not going to, to snap and flexure or are going to bend and under compression, we need to check that it's actually not going to pull out of the ground.